H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so now let's uh, do this uh, object identification. So, how the EFT identify the objects? So, what is object identification? So let's, um, I know, I think uh, earlier like we, we discussed a uh, little bit on this, uh, the object identification, maybe just very high level, let's, uh, this, so what's an object? And uh, what's a class? and what's the relation between the object and the class. So object is, um, you can say the real world entity. And it's, uh, the class is a virtual class is a virtual thing. So it means uh, that doesn't exist. Okay, class. So physically that doesn't exist. Okay. Where's the object uh, that exists? So then classes like you can say like the the blueprint kind of stuff, right? Um, I think earlier like we talked uh, some of these examples like for the class is something we discussed, uh, maybe uh, the automobile class, right, or the fruit class, anything that <coughs> automobile, right, let's say class. Whereas the object going to inherit something, say, Camry car or Honda car car or BMW car right this you know this this is an in technically like when you talk like the object is nothing but an instance of the class right it's an instance of class that means that this Camry car is an instance of this automobile class that means it is an instant Right. Similarly, BMW is another instance of the automobile class or Honda Accord is another instance of automobile class. Then the class will have the, the methods and properties. Okay. The class will have the methods and properties. Right. Say if the properties are like what's the name of the car or what's the color of the car or what's the height of the car what's the width of the car, all these are all comes under the properties. Then what that um, the methods comes, what it does. So here comes like uh, it's going to move forward 
or the move backward or turn left, turn right. All these things comes under the methods, okay? The methods and the properties. <coughs> so, when, once we see like these are the different methods and properties, then objects are going to inherit these methods and properties, right? Whenever you create an instance of that particular class, the class is going to inherit the methods and the properties. Okay, that time it's going to assign the values, right? Say, so what's the name of the car? Okay, name is called Camry car or name is called BMW. So, object will inherit right, inherit the properties and the methods. So this for like uh, when you talk like in real in real world like what's an object and class. When it comes to the software world also, like you'll get different objects. The software objects. So it depends on the environment. Right? Depends on the environment what you're working on, right? You will get different objects and the classes. Suppose like you're working on, like environment is nothing but the technology, like the application, the platform, right? If it is something like say web application and say desktop application, <coughs> or the Java application, .NET application, this way now you'll get uh, different environments where that application is developed. Then, suppose like uh, you come across different objects on each environment. So if you look at, so we're talking about two different environments. So this is um, like say web application. Let me open some desktop application also. I don't know what's taking long. Okay, just give me one. Okay, so this is the, the, the web application and this is a kind of the, the desktop application, right? These are the two different environments. Now when you spy, like say this specific object spy is useful to um, 
basically come up with um, okay let's let me create a, a new test okay so this is a, a new GUI test All right, so now I'm going to spy, basically object spy. So what's the functional of the object spy? It's useful to know the object properties. Okay, how do you know the object properties in EFTs using the object spy? So here, you can you can use this object spy and the tools like you get this object spy. Then what are the objects that you want to spy? See on this application, you, these are all different objects, right? So you will get uh, the links and uh, link objects, or the image objects. These are the edit box objects. They are the button objects. This way, you know, like you will get different objects on this page, and you're going to spy an object using this hand icon click on this hand icon and then click against um, a particular um, object. Say for example, like I'm going to spy this edit box, right? Click on that. So that object spy is going to give you the properties. If you look at it, this is called the class, right? That means this particular object belongs to web edit class. Similarly, if you spy password, it also belongs to the web edit class, right? So this way depends on the environment. Again, like when you spy this desktop application, it's going to give you a different class. See, I'm going to spy now this uh, username, then it's giving different uh, other, like because it's a Windows application, so it's say like window or something. Whereas if you spy the web application, it's going to give you the browser object like the browser and this the kind of hierarchy so that way depends on the environment what the application is developed you will get different classes you see the button is same whether it's a web application it's called a web button class or a web edit class right with the text box it belongs to the web edit whereas if you look at the same button on the desktop or Windows application, in this case, win button class. The button is same, but the environment is different. If it is the Java application, you say it's Java button class. If it is the SAP application, it says SAP button class. That means you will get different classes. And all these objects, right, what are the objects that you see on the application, those are the instances. That means, for example, like the OK button or the submit button or register button. These are all the instances of the web button class. Those are the instances or those objects belongs to the web button class. That way now, if you look at here, under tools, there is an object identification section. And here, you will get different environments. You see the Windows web. Again, if you have more add-ins associated to your test site, you will see different environments here in this drop-down list. Windows, Web, Java.net, you'll see all those environments if you have more add-ins associated to your test. So now, if you look at, say, for example, the web application, right? This is how, this is, this is the important aspect, like how the EFT will identify the objects. See, you'll get two edit boxes here, username and password edit box. But how the EFT is going to recognize these objects uniquely. How the EFT, like how the EFT will know where is username on this page, where is username text box on this page, 
or where is password text box on this page, how it is going to recognize, how it is going to identify using this object identification. See, part of this object identification, you will get different properties here. There are some mandatory properties, like depends on what object you're going to identify, right? Say, for example, <coughs> you look, say, web button, right? See, these are all the mandatory properties, accessory properties, and ordinary identifiers. If you select, say, web edit, then it's going to use these properties. Then how this object identification works? First, is going, first the EFT is going to look the mandatory properties. So for example, like here, let me quickly record some basic test on this web application, right? <coughs> okay, so let me record this application. Okay, just uh, do this uh, sign-in part. Okay, I'll go ahead and continue. And then, here after you entered this, uh, the customer details. And then, here I'm going to check these two checkboxes also part of my test, right? Ticketless travel and uh, same as billing address. So I'm going to check these two checkboxes and hit the secure purchase button. Okay, this time I'm going to stop recording. Okay, um, probably like, uh, let me see this active screen. Okay, so let me create a new test. It seems like the test is not created properly. Because the previous the browser instance is already opened. Okay. Okay, just I'm going to hit continue buttons then. Then I'm going to check these two check boxes. Um, take a less travel and same as billing address at the secure purchase. And then uh, close uh, this browser instance and stop the command. This is how the, the test is um, now is created. Now let's try, try to understand how this object identification works, right? 
If you go to this tools object identification, and also I'm going to open object repository also. So basically like we are talking about uh, objects and its properties, right? When in software industry also like you will get uh, all the software objects has the methods and the properties. So what are those methods and properties? Like what that object does? If it is like a button, so you're going to click. Click method. Right? You can click on that button. If it is something like edit box, set, select, you can set some text or you can delete some text. You can also select the text box. There are all the methods. Similarly, the properties are like what's uh, the name of the button or what's the uh, height, the location, all those are all the properties. Then what's the importance of these uh, 